Welcome back to Squawk Box. Harvard University is now the latest school reinstating its standardized testing requirements for admissions, starting with the class of 2029. Now, this follows some similar decisions made by other Ivy League institutions like Brown and Yale. Joining us right now is Sean Harper. He's the University of Southern California business professor and founder and executive director of USC's Race and Equity Center. Good morning to you. Uh, a big decision, a controversial decision in some circles. Um, and I'm so curious what your initial reaction to it was, uh, given that I think Harvard is at the top of the, the pecking order, if you will, in terms of uh, universities and, and may now if there wasn't a sense that this is going to become a trend, it may very well become that many other universities follow suit. Well, good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, I will say that I was obviously disappointed that Harvard and a handful of other highly selective private institutions have unnecessarily returned to a practice that ultimately makes no difference in determining who is likeliest to succeed in college. It has been proven over and over and over again that standardized admissions testing is most useful to admissions officers for conveniently sorting applicants, not for determining students' likelihood for success. So Harvard, in its statement, actually cited a study uh, suggesting, actually, that as a result of not having access to the scores, and that the scores, by the way, unto themselves were not going to be the the entirety of, of how they were going to decide to admit or, or deny people to the school, but that it was uh, an extra metric or an, and an important one that would help them in a very what they were calling uh, socioeconomic and racial and other things blind way of trying to understand uh, the full strengths of the student. You don't believe that's true? I do not believe that's true. As a matter of fact, I think it is the exact opposite. Um, the research makes painstakingly and irrefutably clear that it is generational wealth, parents' educational attainment, zip code, household income, the socioeconomic profiles of applicants' high schools, access to high-cost private coaching and high-cost test prep um, services that ultimately shape how students perform. Um, on these standardized admissions tests, they are not IQ tests. So in other words, uh, really using a holistic set of metrics uh, without using standardized testing scores gives us even more of an opportunity to ensure that students who don't, who aren't right. privileged in all the ways that I just said, uh, aren't given, you know, right. an unfair well, advantage. But what do you make of the, the, the results of some of these, uh, both studies and, and, and other commentary from admissions offices saying, look, we get the essays, we get the grades. Every school around the country is going to be different. S some schools are going to be giving everybody A's. Some schools uh, don't have the same kind of grade inflation. Um, some schools we know very well. Some schools we don't know very well. That by having a test, a singular test, uh, that it is meritocratic, that you can actually at least see something that is uh, the same across the board, across the entire country. Yeah, but that's the problem, right? The test itself is not a test of merit. It is a test of wealth. It is a test of parents' educational attainment and all those other factors that I noted. Uh, they're not IQ tests. What I will also say is that it's so disappointing that Harvard and some others have chosen to pull the plug on an experiment that, you know, it's too early to make conclusive determinations. What I mean by that is during the COVID-19 pandemic, just about every college and university in America that over relied on standardized admissions testing relaxed their reliance, right? Um, and just flat out, uh, made testing optional for students. And, you know, what we've seen, certainly from the University of California, our nation's largest public system of higher education, uh, let's take UC Berkeley and UCLA. They both are tied in the U.S. news rankings for the top universities, uh, public universities in America. Both of them get twice as many applications as Harvard. They have suspended their reliance on standardized admissions tests. And what they have found is that they've gotten more applications, they've been able to be more selective, and that they've been able to offer 
admission to more deserving Californians and other applicants from around the world. Um, so that is an experiment that is going very, very well. And sure. we've seen it in other higher ed institutions.